Okay, ladies and gents. Hello, hello, hello. It feels like the theme of the content this week is going to be breaking the meta or doing something different or no, actually taking it back to the day where other things used to happen. You'll get more and more aware of what I'm talking about here in just a second. Uh, here we have a game. Now, Age of Empires 2 is a 21-year-old game, okay? It is a 21-year-old game. The majority of my audience, per the analytics, is mid-20s to mid-30s. Granted, there are there's like 0.01% that seems to be a teenager, and there's like 0.01% that is apparently watching over the age of 70. Hello, Grandma. Um, that said, we still can't even say basic words and they get bleeped. That's the only reason I'm introducing it like this. Bloodless tried to say good luck, have fun, or something along those lines. And had to say, why was that censored? And Draken says, don't be rude. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Bloodless is a player who really has been gaining a name for himself this year. And he is on the Clown Legion team, okay? He is on the Clown Legion team. And Draken is also on the Clown Legion team. He's a bit more well-known and also the higher rated of the two. Uh, but both of these players are on a team that is essentially full of clowns. Um, if I had a little red nose, I'd go honk honk, and I would it'd be perfectly timed. I don't know if we're going to have that edited in later, but that would be top tier content if we did. Uh, the whole clown thing started many years ago. And I'll actually tell this story before we get into the cast, if that's okay, because I feel like this story is interesting for people. And it was around the time there was an arena tournament when the community was much, was much smaller. Um, at that time, there was very few top players, similar to now, actually. We have a few more. And then there were very few viewers. So I want to say it was 2015. I think it was Masters of Arena 3. And the arena boys were so excited about it. They were like, oh my goodness, we are going to destroy everyone. So they're playing arena, 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 practicing, practicing, practicing. And there was a high-level player named Wonder back then. Eighth Wonder. Uh, unless I'm getting it wrong, I believe it was him. And Wonder shows up to the forums. And he said... Shoot, I wish I had the whole paragraph. But he was like, you guys get excited about these tournaments every time they happen. And then all the Arabia players, all the open map players end up coming in and winning your tournaments. And he was like, clown players on a clown map. <laughs> And so, then everyone, including the arena players, started calling themselves clowns, and that's kind of the story. Um, it was, it sounds a little mean the way he said it, but if you know Wonder, he was a, he's a massive troller boy. And so, years later, the clown name lives on, everyone calls them clowns, and uh, they appreciate that. Anyways, I, I'm, I'm sure that people enjoyed that story. If you didn't enjoy that story, let's talk about the game here. Draken is playing as the Incas, and Bloodless is playing as the Malay. Now, back in those days, there was no Malay, so the clowns didn't get to take advantage of the fact that Malay can advance significantly faster to the feudal age, 66% faster. And there's this special build order, which I think Bloodless is going to try here, which basically puts Malay in the top three of all arena civilizations. And it is advancing faster to the feudal age, and any other save. So going up real quick, researching your both your eco upgrades, macroing like crazy, and then doing the same thing with the castle age and just rushing up to castle age. And if you do this build order properly, you are going to be in the castle age at around 15 minutes, 15:30, which is the uptime of the enemy. Uh, in most cases, except you're going to have a six villager lead and an eco upgrade lead. And just to touch on why. You're going to have the villager lead. It's because your TC in Age of Empires is, cannot produce vills while you're aging up. So, if you're spending less time aging up, in this case, it actually means you're going to have three more villagers than the opponent if you keep your TCs working all the time. So, Draken has to know this. Draken has to know that Malay are really strong. And he's going to try and think of something to break this. And he's on the way to feud range faster. And, and it's a little sad, actually, uh, Bloodless is not going to go for the build order we talked about because Bloodless doesn't know how strong that is. Feels bad, man. But um, he's still going to go for a fast castle because, you know, there's stone walls. But here comes Draken. Now, I wish I could remember the titles of all the games that I'm referencing, but there were some awesome games between John Slow 
and Draken. Back then, he was known as Dracont, uh, but the same player. And soon after the wall nerf was made, players were tower rushing on Arena. And so what that change was, was that stone walls no longer had 1800 HP all the time, but they had 900 HP in Dark Age and in Feudal Age. And villagers have always had a little bit of a bonus against walls. And so players tried, started to tower rush and make it crazy because you could place a tower here and then you could use some vills to start to attack the walls. It would make it rather complicated for them to deal with it. So anyways, Bloodless sees this and unfortunately for Bloodless, his gold is here, here, and here. So he does really need to protect this area. And you'll see when Bloodless eventually reaches the Feudal Age. I personally disagree with this way of this build order. I personally do. I would have preferred the other way. Yeah, he's going to rush to Feudal Age. He's going to have quite a few vills, and it's defense mode or Bloodless. Now, when you get tower rushed, the, the struggle is you're usually caught in two mines because you wanted to go fast castle originally. So if you look at Bloodless's resources, he wanted to get 800 food and 200 gold. But he had to pull some villagers off the gold, the wall. Now suddenly he's looking at his resources, and when he gets to Castle Age, he's not quite going to have the res to click up. Now the other thing that's tricky is, even if he does get the resources to click up, which by the way, Bloodless has to protect this scallop, then he's not going to have much on every resource. So he might arrive to Castle Age, but he's, off, he's on one farm right now. And things are just not looking super pretty for him. So it basically forces you, re forces you to react. Even if the tower player doesn't kill Vils, their economy is going to be safe at home and well protected. And so this is a, it's a unique build. And I encourage you guys to look back pre-DE. I know the graphics kind of sucked. Every time I see those pre-DE games, it's nostalgic. But I'm also like, how did we play this? <laughs> But anyways, I encourage you guys to look back because there were some crazy games. Tower rushing into Fast Imperial was very much the play back then. Yeah, everyone has a plan until they get the tower in the face. That's essentially what this is. You might have even given me the YouTube title, my friend. Everyone has a plan until they get towered in the face. And the thing about a tower rush is it forces you to make all kinds of awkward decisions. Like right here, he's going to make a tower. And that's fine. But now he's got 10 villagers building this tower. He's going to garrison some of his bills. Some of his gold will still be ranged. Just not a fun spot to be at. Can't afford his wood or his farm upgrade, whereas Draken is working off of the wood and the farm upgrade. Two villagers on gold, two villagers on stone. And I have to say, as Draken maybe takes a risk here, the tower's at 95%, actually. He might want to get that up. I have to say, the build order is looking pretty clean for Draken. I think your average fast castle with Incas, if you were to go for more passive play, you'd be in Castle Age at probably something like 15.30, maybe 15 minutes. Wadlow's trying to stop this. Castle's at 90, or not castle, sorry, tower. At 98%. Um... Man, those vills are so weak. He doesn't want to lose them, and so he decides to just run home. Yeah, he'll be up at around 17 minutes, but unfortunately, there's only two towers. And for now, Bloodless has done <clears throat> a really good job at pushing this back. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a frog in my throat right now. And this is this is what Draken wanted to avoid. He didn't want the Malay player to comfortably make it to the next age. And he did not want the Malay player to be up in villagers and unfortunately that's just unavoidable on arena it's such a unique build because malay are not seen as good on like open lands maps but on the land maps that have um some walls to them like hideout or arena they're able to perform this type of a build and do a pretty good job scout out and about for bloodless and for now it feels like okay draken's just gonna go home he tried, you know, he's just going to go home. He's not going to do anything crazy from here. But he does have a barracks in the middle. And he does have one villager still there. So uh, we all know what she's named. And 
on your standard arena games, you see players try and fight for map control to get relics. So with this eagle out and about and this eagle out and about, that seems to be the play. Here you have Bloodless. And he says, you know what? I think it's time for that second town center. But you see what I mean? It takes so long to advance to the next age with any other sieve. And so this TC can't produce Vils. So even though it's 0-0 with Vil KD, the Malay player has a two villager lead right now. And also is able to get the second town center up and get an even bigger villager lead. This is funny. <laughs> this is funny. Draken comes in here. He really wants to take out that uh, Manganel. And oh, what a great shot there. And what a good decision from Bloodless to get a wall down. Just so this doesn't happen again. I like it. He also healed up his starting scout. He doesn't have any military right now. So he healed up his starting scout. So that's out there. And here he comes with the monk. But maybe he was trying to get away with this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see what Draken does here. Because Draken might need to be careful. Bloodless is blocking. That was such a good decision from Bloodless. He was actually going to block the eagle. So it couldn't attack the monk. And now we've got two monks converting. Scout goes down though. 42 villagers for Z Bloodless. Who's currently on stone. In the middle of the map, we have that monastery for Draken, who definitely doesn't want to give up control. He has not allowed any relics to be brought in so far from Bloodless. Eagles do resist conversions. So Monk's usually not the go-to unit, and you can see why there. So a conversion does come in. And boom, headshot. That's actually really worth it right there. Get him as he runs away. Get him. <laughs> He guessed what side he would dodge to. I love it. All right. So back at home, you look at Draken's position. He's behind by seven villagers. Military counts even. He's not adding the second town center. So there's this thing in Age of Empires where if someone's ahead of you or something, trying to catch up in that way is sometimes not the play. So best example here is, you know Malay are going to be able to outboom you. So do you even want to boom? Because if you're doing that, you're going down a road in which the enemy is going to be stronger. Now, this does not mean that you should never boom on Arena. I, I don't want you guys to think that you shouldn't boom on Arena. <laughs> it's a situational thing. But what Draken is trying to do here is continue this aggression just in the Castle Age as he knows what he's up against. And so you see the Eagles coming in here again, going for the Siege. And this could be a double whammy here. Oh, man. Okay, the Eagles were going to run in. And one of the Eagles gets converted. The other one could get converted as well, but no, it just dies. Here comes that push from Draken. He's got the potential to break through here. And he does have a really good idea of where the golds are. He knows this gold is here. He knows the other two golds are forward as well. So we have Redemption for Bloodless. Now, this is where it gets fun. Both players do have redemption available, okay? Both players can go for redemption. Redemption's 500 gold, though, which is half the cost of what you need to spend on Imp, essentially. Or actually, it's not really half. It's more than half of what you need to spend to go to the Imperial Age. And so now we see a castle drop from Draken, and he thinks he's good, but he's not good because he loses the Manganel, and he has to delete the other one. Draken's had the gold to get redemption, but didn't choose to do that. And that castle foundation is going to have to be canceled. And so Bloodless with the defense. And Bloodless says, I'll just drop my castle here and we're going to be good to go. So what does Draken do now? Because Draken, unfortunately, is behind in villagers and behind in control and can't really push with siege. Can't complete the castle. Donated siege to the enemy. Eagle's still running around. Unit's getting sniped here. It's looking worse and worse for Draken as he decides to plop the relics here. And it just feels like everything's falling apart for him. You hear Wololo, Wololo, Wololo all the time. And, uh, okay, no conversion there. Now let's talk about the position Draken's in, okay? Because he's not producing out of three TCs. Yum. He saves more food. So let's look at the food collected, actually. This is an important stat. Okay, so he did collect, like, five more food. This is an amazing example of what I'm talking about. So he collected a little more food and a little more gold. But Bloodless 
is creating vills and sending them all to wood from these TCs. And he's going to pull them off and make farms. So in the long term, Bloodless is going to have more food. He's going to have more wood. And then more villagers, so probably would have more of everything else. So when you go one TC, you're able to go to imp faster. Because you're not spending as many resources to pump villagers out of three TCs because villagers are 50 food a pop. So really, the only way back for Draken is to utilize Imp in some way. And he's added Archer Ranges to add Slingers, which we so rarely see at high-level Age of Empires. Certainly, we don't see that on Arena. I have Karambit Warriors here from the enemy. This is a very flimsy but strong, if you can mass, uh, infantry unit. But unfortunately, the mass is not going to happen. Great defense from Draken. But this freaking castle, man. If he can't make Trebs in the next age, I don't see how he could push anything and have success. He needs to have a castle. This is the boldest castle he could have gone for. But he does take out the siege. Slingers are a unique unit for the Incas. Draken, send more vills, dude. Come on, bring more villagers. Here he comes. Um, they're a unique unit for the Incas, and they shred infantry. And the Karambit Warrior is, what, 35 HP? 30 HP. So, I mean, it's just not going to fare well against this. And it's okay. Malay do have other options. But that will, of course, take some time and take some time to go for some type of a tech switch. So, 78 villagers versus 48. If this was Arabia or any open map, this would be GG. But on Arena, when you go fast imp and you have forward control, you've always got a chance. So, normally I'd say, when you get stuck in this position, sometimes staying all-in castle age is the way to play it. Repair your castle, and go rams with a bunch of knights, and push this. However, Draken is expecting that. If the opponent has siege behind their castle, you can't ram push it. So it's the perfect play to have the siege right here. Also, he could have his treb back here too in this little pocket of space. So, honestly, just like... Really hard to know what to do. Well, they also have really bad knights. So it's not like that's an option. Um, and now Bloodless is starting to think, well, maybe I'll just go in. So he's going to add archer ranges. The counter to the slingers or the best unit against the slingers would be something like Skirmisher or Arbalest. But if you look at Draken's position, he's already thinking about that. He's already making skirms. So he told the opponent, hey, you can't make Karambits because I'll kill you. And now he's thinking that Malay can't go for Cav, and that Malay are most likely going to go Archers. Weird to me that Treb just fired on something other than the castle. Okay, there we go. Now it's hitting the castle. So we have another castle here for Bloodless. Thankfully for him, he does advance very quickly to the next age, but it is becoming increasingly awkward for him as he has boomed and done everything that Malay typically want to do. Now he's going to click Wait, what? Oh my god, he clicked Thumb Ring! That's a big mistake! That's 300 food! I think getting Thumb Ring and Crossbow right now is a mistake. I think he needs Imp. Though you could argue that being an Imp faster doesn't really give him much against this pressure at the moment. I guess he could make his own trebuchets. But Bloodless is just completely overwhelmed. He's gonna make some Karambits. He feels he needs military. I think what he really needs is actually Siege. I think he needs his own Siege here and he needs to give it a shot. Holy moly, man. This is ridiculous. And he's desperate, so he's going to go in for this engagement with the Karambits just to maybe delay the siege or kill the siege. He loses a third of the Karambits. He loses half the Karambits. He loses all the Karambits, and he'll take out one Mangonel. But he does give himself time to make the crossbows. So crazy when you're under this pressure, man, to, to get everything right. He does click Imperial, though. He's still on four TCs. And now, actually, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to pause here, guys. I want to see the difference with resources brought in. Now you're seeing it. Now you're seeing it. Way more wood, way more food, way more stone. And that should continue in theory, right? You look at Draken's base. And Dra Draken has, like, no eco whatsoever. But anytime he gets a resource, he's spending it. And he's, he's putting it into the military. And it's easier for him to do it because he's not under pressure. He's the one pressuring right now. The Bloodless, with 120 population, has boomed up as Malay typically do. Of course, was super unfortunate with the forward golds. 
what is going to be his plan now is we have draken running in to drop another castle inca castles are cheaper so there we have the castle so we've got that mangonel which may not do much against this much army guys i talk about treb numbers when you want to take someone's castle out it is situational and it always depends but i believe the magic number is four draken has gone for five draken sees the mangonel We'll just fight with the villager, actually, and some slingers. And he melts that castle. And and Bloodless is just... He wanted to get Arp. He now has Arp on the way, but the Skirms are already here. He does not seem to have the time to be able to get what he needs, despite still having a population lead. It's insane play from Draken, who has four relics, by the way. So that's something you're thinking about long term. I think the downside for Bloodless is just he was he's playing with the Civ, which is perhaps a little too predictable. A little one-sided. Yes, their economy's really good. But what can you make with their economy? Their options are certainly not as good as other civilizations. And now this TC is gonna go down. So he went from four TCs. Soon he's gonna be on just two TCs as he's making more ranges. And trying to get back into this one. I love it. I love the pressure as you have a snow leopard and an arbalest uh, and a villager heading over here. It feels like some weird Age of Empires joke you'd hear at the bar. And Draken's not done. Also, check out this stat. Two minutes of TC idle time the entire game. It's actually pretty good. Just one TC. He's kept that TC producing all the time. Whereas Bloodless has added the TCs. Obviously, has found benefit to that, but... Is maybe not done as much as he would have wanted there with his TCs. But it makes sense. You know, you, you've got idle time everywhere now. He's going to try and add his own skirms. Which is probably his best option. He could go bomber cannons and skirms. And he's making a bomber cannon, which could help him snipe trebs. But now the siege workshop goes down. And now he's like, oh god. He's going to add another siege workshop. And now the population's tied. You got skirmishers back into the eco got trebs continuing to take out things this is the worst feeling you'll start to get housed because you'll lose your houses well this though yeah. does have good upgrades on the skirms well this will actually have fully upgraded skirms here in a second so bloodless is still alive and he's gonna hold on and now draken starts to sense what type of game it is so i think he realizes he's done enough damage where He's able to hold this position for now. He doesn't have to necessarily go in and push. And check it out. Second TC. I just love the game sense we've seen from Draken in this game. He knew when he had to go all in. Now he knows that it's at least... Like, some type of a pushback is going to come from Bloodless. But it's going to take some time. So he's maybe able to go into another unit. Which he's switching into Eagles. And add more economy. Because he's likely still behind gonna fall back now and trebs have 16 range and bomber cannons have 12 range so what you can sometimes do and it's a little awkward because trebs are inaccurate but you can uh unpack your trebs behind the castle just like this and you can try and hit the siege also you could go for monks he's getting block printing right now and block printing gives your monks 12 range and then with redemption you can convert the bomber cannons so it's funny, he wasn't spending gold for a while, besides on Trebs and Mangonels. So he actually is floating gold, but he doesn't have that much gold income. The relics have definitely helped, though. I hate being in Bloodless's position, because I always lose my Bombard Cannons to freaking Trebs. I always do. Watch. He's gonna get hit. I can just feel it. <laughs> oh, so close. You have to constantly babysit them and move them around. And then, of course, you still need to hit the castle. You know you're on some type of clock. He hasn't lost them yet. He took out the Manganel, which was good. Draken's still firing with those trebs. Another solid attack round for Bloodless, who now has more army. Oh, and he gets hit. Okay, does have two again. His four trebs continue to fire volleys. They're also firing volleys at different times, which makes it kind of awkward, right? And Bullis would have loved to have saved a treb or two, I'm sure. I don't think he even made a treb. And behind this, we have the eagle tech switch, which Bloodless has no clue is happening. 
MLA could go for Swordsman, but look at the eco. 65 on wood for Bloodless. He doesn't have the space for farms right now, so he would need food income to be able to get a tech switch in to go for Swordsman if he's expecting the Eagles. Castle, though, halfway down. Treb still firing. Bloodless still microing. Also, has a counterattack over here. <laughs> Uh, Inca villagers are affected by infantry blacksmith upgrades at this stage of the game. That's actually going to take a while, but it did do something. And now Bloodless hears the Wololo, and he loses the Bombard Cannon. That hurts, man. And now he sees the Eagles, and this is where you start to say, oh, no. So your best move probably is to mix in a few ARBs, because they do a slightly better job, and that's what he's doing. And Draken, still 20 villagers behind. He's kind of maintained that. His eco is certainly more efficient, I think, in bringing in the resources that he wants. And the eagles are going to dive. They're not fully upgraded. The, the unique tech isn't in. They don't have the final armor upgrade. But Draken just figures, if I trade against any of the gold units he has, he's going to be completely out of gold. But maybe it was a little early there, because he did lose most of these eagles. And he didn't take out a Bombard Cannon yet. Okay, now he does. Now I think that's probably worth it. And if he takes the second one, it's def it was definitely worth the trip. I guess he also could move his trebs forward. He also could snipe this relic or take the relic away. And Draken now 15 villagers behind. Um, shoot, what's the upgrade for Incas called? Couriers? I think it's called Couriers. Uh, forgive me because it was changed. No, no, no. It used to be called Couriers, and it was called Couriers for years. It's now Fabric Shield. And Fabric Shields gives additional armor to these Eagles. Now he's got Plate Barding armor or Plate Mail armor coming in as well. So these Eagles are just going to be too hard to stop. Another Bomber Cannon went down. Bloodless still sitting back with more population. But he won't have the Relics, which is what you need long term for gold. He won't be able to take his forward golds because there's castles on it. And Bloodless had a plan, man. He had a plan. Then he got Tower Rushed. Still ended up playing pretty good after getting Tower Rushed. And maybe he was just too comfortable with that boom. As Draken waits to control the game. Adding the barracks now. <laughs> the random Arbalest show up here. I, I love how Bloodless continues to try and raid. Because there's not much more he can really do, right? Okay, these things should have... Shoot, chat, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it 10 Pierce Armor after Fabric Shields? I think it ends up being 10 Pierce Armor. They still are worse Eagles than mine. No, 10 Pierce Armor sounds like a lot. Is that what it is? Shoot, I'm sorry. I'm very confused. Bloodless needs to push back with what little gold he can get from just selling at this point. He's just selling wood at the market. He cannot mine any gold. I think... If you had a castle, you could say, try now with 30 farmers to try and go for the unique tech, which means your two-handed swordsman only costs gold. That would probably be your best move, but he doesn't have the castles anymore, so he can't even get that tech. He's going to go for one last attempt here, I think, at getting himself out of this position. And this is when Draken starts to flood. Took him a bit to get the barrack numbers. Took him a bit to get the gold numbers. Eagles cost mostly gold. Still don't think he has his, that tech yet. But Eagles have 8 Pierce Armor. The so Skirmishers are going to do 1 damage a hit. Arbs are going to do 2 damage a hit. And they also have fairly high attack, as we know now. Bombard Cannon will go down. The Skirms and Arbs are going to go down. And of course, the Eagles could always raid. Not that Villager kills are even important right now. Nice positioning there for Bloodless. I don't think killing Wood Villagers really changes the game. I think it just comes down to what military can be made. And as Draken takes relic number five, Draken can make everything. <laughs> so Draken is going to win this game when he was 20 vils behind. He opened up with a tower rush. And he went with a fast dimp. And this is that clown experience. If Bloodless is good on these maps as well. But I think we honestly just saw the difference in experience between these two. That was such a good play. I mean, it was gutsy. Look at the timeline. He was so far behind in so many crucial areas. But he was able to control relics. 
and an early castle age, he denied them from Bloodless. He was able to get a castle down, barely. The Slingers completely baited the enemy into maybe making a few more Karambits. And that pressure, man. The pressure in Feudal. And Castle Age kind of forced Bloodless to make a few small errors, which snowballed. And then also late Castle for Bloodless. He had the resources to go in, but he knew he needed army, and he was just torn on the two, and then lost his castles, and the timing was just not there. Relics are huge when you have low eco. 3,000 gold brought in from Draken. There's the overall KD. I think he took the better fights and he made the better army because he focused more on the army and more on the fights this game. And uh, for Bloodless, he's going to be kicking himself. Woo! But honestly, when you're under pressure and you have more vills, this is a very common statistic. Because typically, you place your TCs on wood. And if you're lucky, wood and a gold or wood and a stone. And then you pull those villagers off of wood to place farms. And, or to go to gold or stone. That's typically how you do it. So unfortunately for Bloodless, and I, I don't know how Draken would have played this if the golds weren't like this, but all of his golds were forward. So as he creates more vills, he doesn't have anything besides wood <laughs> to send them to. Um, and, you know, I wish I knew if how this game would have gone if maybe there was one single back gold for Bloodless. But you do have to say, he did virtually everything he felt he could do to protect his golds. He ended up pushing back the towers and dropping a castle, but then he was stuck too deep in Castle Age and the Fast Imp got him. Well played, Draken.